once I'd like to see a reporter say to Joe Biden when he stands at the damn podium in the White House without a mask, Mr. President, why aren't you wearing a mask? Just once, I'd like to, get to see you say to Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, when she stands at the podium with no mask, Ms. Psaki, why don't you have a mask? Thank you all. <laughs> now, before you laugh at Ted Cruz, and spoiler alert, we will, the technique that he's using there is time honored from Soviet leaders like Khrushchev to, I don't know, salesman at Dunder Mifflin. That is how you show that you're an alpha man and sales will go high into the next quarter. That's what you, do. you all said I was a coward. Not a coward, could a coward hit this like this over and over? JR. What is wrong with him? It's he, so pathetic. Oh God, he's trying anything. It's desperation. But listen, um, he even used a kind of curse word. He said, damn, as he hit the table. Oh, Do you forgot? It was oh, damn podium. That damn podium. So he's upset at the podium. He said it at, at, at uh, Joe Biden and he's upset at Jen Psaki. Now, I'm sure there's people who will be like, he's making a point because you guys never ask Democrats why they're not wearing a mask when they're at these things. Cool, actually, fine. I think they should ask them these things. It's okay, ask them that question because um, I'd like to know. But here, it's not about that, as you've easily pointed out here. It's not about that mask. I just want to go because he answered, by the way, that was a long press conference. That was at the 51 minute mark of the entire press conference. Oh so he got to the point where she, this woman asked him this. You guys are all collected up there and nobody's wearing masks. How do you feel about that considering it's spreading so hard? Then he went, to two other answers, then said, I want to come back to the thing because I have an opportunity. So he had his opportunity, he took it. The problem is, is he hasn't learned yet. Everyone sees through him. Even Republicans, generally Republicans will circle the wagons for each other and be like, he's helping me by pushing this narrative. So I have to support that narrative in order to keep my narrative going. No one is on a, a Ted Cruz's narrative. No one, there's no reason for other Republicans to support Ted Cruz's one off narratives when he decides to make himself the center of attention. So they yeah. don't. He just doesn't realize that's how it works yet because he's still trying to be this one off guy who thinks he's smarter than everyone else. And yeah. it's it's just not it's not gonna work out. But he's trying to flip that script and be like, you guys are gonna call me two more weak a-holes anymore. I'm gonna show you I'm strong. He, oh. It's so mm -hmm. you're hundred percent right. So see he just he has his plan and he just can't, he can't see that he will never be the guy in the voters eyes that he wants to be. The voters like him more than they should, let's let's give him that. He's stupid and a weenie and they don't 100% see that. But he's not gonna be president, the GOP is not, and it, it's not about Trump. If, if Trump you know, succumbs to the Flazo fish tomorrow, there will be someone else who's gonna make him look like a coward and like a fool. It's just that is the curse of Ted Cruz. I don't feel that sorry about it. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.